Hey everyone, this is Chris, bringing you my third attempt at an actual in-person live cards Lord of the Rings playthrough. Uh, you haven't seen the previous videos because uh, technical issues, they looked bad. They sounded good, but they looked bad. Uh, so I am back again, <laughs> one more time, attempting to play Journey Up the Anduin with a, a slightly Dale deck. Is not all in on the Dale cards, as you can sort of see based on what's out on the table in front of you. But it's it's got some of the new ones, and I think they're going to help us clear out the hill troll as many times as it takes. All right, so a little bit of a rundown of the deck. Uh, we got Bard Son of Brand, who is going to help us play spirit cards like Light of Valinor, and also all of the various items that are in the deck that we otherwise don't have a resource match for. Uh, the biggest example of that is sitting right on the top here, the Hauberk of Mail. We've got Aristor, who is going to give us effectively infinite cards, although probably never enough cards. Uh, and for him, we have Light of Valinor, we have Protector of Lorien, we have Elven Spear, so that he can be our sort of questing, attacking support hero. Uh, I wish he was a warrior, because this bow of you would be fantastic for him. And I can't sort of easily ready Bard Son of Brand without uh, using an Unexpected Courage or something like that. So, eh, so close to being fantastic. Our third hero, of course, as you can see, is Baragond, who is going to be using the brand new Hauberk of Mail, uh, because it makes him a defensive monster. 5 defense, 5 HP, like what is going to break through that? And before you ask, there's a shadow effect in Journey Down the Anduin, which might be in this deck, uh, that causes characters to not count their defense, so uh, that. That is what kills Baragond. <laughs> and it did it a couple weeks ago when I was initially testing a Baragond Dale deck, although that was Spirit Baragond, but either way. Um, and... You know, that's sort of gist of it. Uh, we don't actually have any Dale allies, but we do have a handful of warriors who can use the bow of you. So it will get some use, have no fear. And it's got all the usual healing, will of the west, normal air store things. All right, I'm gonna take all these and shuffle them back in the deck. See you back here in a minute. <clears throat> All right, I am uh, pretty satisfied with my opening hand, though I don't have any of the Baragond attachments, so that might cause problems. But we're gonna give it a shot. So, set up, I set my cards out to the side, I've got the Evil Creatures deck, and I will discard until I find it. There's the shadow effect I was talking about. There's a location. Starting off with Gladden Fields. Uh, these are discarded, right? Yeah. Great. All right, Gladden Fields in play. On to quest stage 1B. Each of my heroes gets their resource. I'll draw four cards. Oof, and now comes the challenge of which of these things can I play? Uh, well, Baragon gets Hauberk of Mail. That's an easy one. We'll put an Elven Spear on Aristor. I think I will 1-2 play an Envoy of Pelagir, who's going to give Baragond. Uh, I did that totally backwards. Should have been 1-2 to give Brand, who is noble, two resources. This two resources lets me play Arwen. And I, I, mean, I suppose I might as well put a bow of you on Bard, even though we're probably not going to use it anytime soon. I don't have any more resources to play any of the rest of these, so I guess we're just going to quest. Uh, 
we will send Bard for sure, uh, Envoy of Pelagir, and Arwen. I think he's fine. And if I get an enemy, I can defend and attack. Uh, plus I have Elrond's Council in my hand, so we reveal Hills of Wilderland. All right, so that is currently a whopping five threat, five progress location. So my two, three, four, five, six with Elrond's Council is too short. Uh, there aren't any enemies, so I might as well just use Aristor and Baragond to knock it down to three for the quest phase. It means I make no progress, but I don't have to raise my threat at all. And I can travel to the Hills Wilderland. Uh, all right, refresh, discard all my cards, tick up to 27 threat, stand up this mess of heroes and attachments, and move on to round number two. I got one resource on all the heroes. Uh, Baragon gets a Spear of the Citadel. Hauberk of Mail doesn't really do anything, uh, and Double Protector of Lorien means Aristor is now the Protector of Lorien. Two cards in hand means I could quest a little bit extra hard. Um, so let's send Aristor, Envoy of Pelagir, and Arwen to the quest. Uh, Arwen will boost Baragon's defense, and I can pitch to raise my willpower. So two, three, four, five, up against three threat. Up against six threat. So I will discard two cards, make one progress. Uh, that's, that's not great. Yeah, pretty much no other way to say it. That is not great. <laughs> Moving on to the next round. Normally there are some treacheries or something. All right, one, two, two. All right, well, now Baragond is set. Here is a Raven-Winged Helm and a Gondorian Shield. Uh, one off of Bard pays for Light of Valinor. I have one card left. It is Will of the West. Uh, there's two of them in the deck, so I don't have to play it yet. And basically, we're just going to quest with everybody. Uh, two, four, five, six, seven... Uh, might as well discard now eight committed to the quest. Uh, and we reveal the pack of wargs. All right, up against 10, I am forced to raise my threat by two. Um, I will, do I optionally engage pack of wargs? I think I have to. Optionally engage pack of wargs, we get a shadow card. Defend with Baragond, puts one point of damage on them. That's two points, I meant one. We reveal a goblin for the staging area. Not ideal. Uh, but Baragond doesn't take any damage. We're like slightly better off than we were before, so moving on to the next round. to 31 threat. It's counterintuitive, but I like need allies right now. Well, I guess what I really need is willpower and none of these allies are particularly going to help. Well, I guess they can't hurt. Here is a veteran sword elf who will get a hauberk of mail because she is a warrior. Uh, two pays for a warden of healing. Uh, 
This card I probably didn't need to play, but we'll see if that ends up hurting me. So, committing to the quest, I have two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, ten, discarding Dunedain Hunter. Uh, up against ten. That is a tie. Can't optionally engage Stray Goblin. So, Baragon will defend this pack of wards. Two damage. Attacking enemy gets plus two. Six attack bounces off of Baragon's seven hit points. Uh, and Aristor can't fight back, so... <laughs> Ticking up. Whew. I'll be honest with you, I feel like we got off to a great start, but that encounter card sucks. Two, one, one resources, four cards off the top of the deck. Sure, put a cram on Baragond uh, so that if I do get a second enemy, I can deal with it. Everything else is going to sit in my hand. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve committed to the quest. Up against 10. Up against 15. Uh, all right. Failing by three bumps me up to 35 threat. Can't travel, can't make progress. Baragon will defend against these wargs. Who've somehow not managed to make a second attack. But they're about to now. Uh, I think I will use this cram to have Baragon defend and to put a fourth point of damage on them. So now they only get to make one more attack. But I think we're probably done. All right, 36. And we get resources and we draw our cards. Uh, this will help. Spend two to play an Eregion Survivor. I have needed those. And we're just going to go straight to the quest. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14 is decidedly not enough. Especially since we've revealed another location. All right, so my 14 up against 17 is three extra threat. Uh, and at this point, all those cards have completely run under my face on the screen, and it is very clear we are not going to dig ourselves out of this hole. I swear this encounter deck has treacheries, right? There's like this one, which is great to see. There's a little surgy goblin dudes, some like normal goblin dudes, the East Bite. Despite the fact that I shuffled this before starting this game, it feels like what happened is that I more or less got all the nasty encounter cards from the new sets up at the top. The four threat wargs, this massive location, these two. I mean, the Brownlands is old, but... Oof. All right, uh, I guess that's going to wrap up the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed watching me get completely crushed. Thanks for watching. All right, you know what? That was a really unsatisfying loss. So I've decided I'm gonna do this again and we're gonna see if maybe we can avoid being location locked this time. Uh, our starting location is Lonely Lands, which you saw at the end of the last one. It's not fantastic, but this deck doesn't have a lot of events to play during the quest phase, so that's not a big deal. Uh, yeah, so let's kick it off.
my threat reset, my resources, and we're gonna draw our four additional cards. Okay, that is pretty good all around. I have a Gondorian shield for Baragond, a Hauberk of Mail for Baragond. So now we're sitting at seven defense and five HP, which is pretty good. Have a Light of Valinor for Aristor. Have an Elven Spear for Aristor. And I wish I had Protector of Lorien, but I don't. So I'm going to use a good harvest and pay two. I'm naming Lord, by the way, for a Warden of Healing. Uh, and before we go to the quest phase, because of that Lonely Lands, I'm going to play Elrond's Council to drop my threat a little bit. Uh, it doesn't terribly matter if you have high threat in this quest, but occasionally it means you can say like dodge the hill troll for a round which is pretty good uh yeah all right i will send four to the quest it's probably not going to be enough but we'll find out hey there we go it's a little bit of a softball is despair it doesn't even surge if it misses so we make two progress on the quest which gets a research or a resource token. Uh, I will travel to the Lonely Lands. And at the beginning of the encounter phase, that resource token comes off and we are forced to spawn the top card of the evil creature's deck, which is a wargs. I will engage the wargs. They get a shadow card. Baragon will defend, and we're hoping for a shadow effect, because otherwise this is just going to be annoying. Deal one damage to the defending character. That is about the tamest shadow effect you can get. But it means the wargs are still engaged with me. And I can have Aristor plus three cards. It is actually more than I need to kill the wargs, which go to the evil creature's discard pile. And the Warden of Healing can heal up a Baragond. You can already see that we are doing way better than the last time. Though maybe I should not speak too soon. All right, moving on to round number two. Draw my second four cards. Uh, well, this is a bummer because here's the second Will of the West. which I think I will play. All right, so we're gonna Protector of Lorien on Aristor. We're gonna send basically those two to the quest. These four of them. We'll reveal, weighed down. Uh, all right, Aristor is weighed down. Just slide that over. Uh, it's not actually too bad. Could just not use Aristor for anything. So I'm gonna make four progress. Um, I will discard Unexpected Courage to make it five, uh, which clears the Lonely Lands. And I guess in the encounter phase, I will spend one and play Will of the West. Take my discard pile, shuffle it back into my deck, even though there's only like four cards in it. Uh, but you know, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. End of the round, I do discard a veteran sword elf, stand all my characters back up. Uh, Aristor technically does have to stand, so I'm going to discard an elven spear. Uh, if we're going to avoid exhausting him with weighed down, basically can't use him to attack, 
So, seems like a safe choice. All right, and we got one and one and two resources. Four cards off the top of the deck. Well, that's an interesting set. Uh, let me put a cram on Baragon to play an Envoy of Pelergear, putting a resource back on Baragon. Uh, and the extra Light of Eleanor and Protector of Lorien, I just don't need. So committing to the quest, I will send five. I have two available as additional. All right, there's another Lonely Lands. Time to make three progress. Uh, might as well discard these two, make it five progress. And get up to six, seven of 10. There is a resource token on the quest. I will travel to the Lonely Lands. And in the encounter phase, we spawn the Hill Troll. Uh, and here's what I mean about sometimes it's nice to not need to engage him because he can just sort of sit there for a little bit. I don't have a spear. I don't have any attack to deal with him. Just going to have to leave it. So, taking up to 29 threat, readying all my characters, and moving on to the next round. Really bad at finding the side of the die that has two on it. One, two, three, four cards off the top of the deck. Well, that's a bit of a bummer. I guess I will pay two for an unexpected courage on Bear God. I will commit to the quest two, four, five up against one in the staging area. All right, up against four, I'm gonna make one, two, three, four progress, which is not enough to move past the Lonely Lands. So Gladden Field and the Hill Troll can stay there. Uh, this is now two veteran sword elves in the discard pile. That's all right with me. And I'm not gonna take the Hill Troll yet. So we refresh, take my threat up to 30 as I do all these things out of order, and put resources back on my heroes. We are up to three on Baragon, so I should be able to do something with that. Well, here's a big thing, Spear of the Citadel. I have an unexpected courage in my hand, but that doesn't do me a lot of good. Um, I will try a Dunedain Hunter. It's not a very high hit rate in this quest, but it looks like I've got one. Hmm. So, yep, I will take a Stray Goblin engaged with me. Uh, they are nice and easy to kill. And the rest of those cards, as I accidentally bump my lights, Get shuffled back into the encounter deck. And this is a surge that is not going to be popping up during questing, so that's fine. Um, this is good. The Dunedain Hunter will help us deal with the Hill Troll. Otherwise, we're a little light on attack. So, let us quest. Two, four, uh, five, six. Seven, eight, committed to the quest. And we reveal a goblin troop. Uh, that's fine, actually. I send eight up against seven. I make one progress. It's just enough to clear the Lonely Lands. Uh, I'm at Hill Troll threat level, so I'm going to travel to Gladden Fields and not worry too much about it. And I will engage the Hill Troll. These enemies get their shadow cards in that order. And the Goblin Troop can just stay there. Right. One, two shadow effects. Uh, Baragond will defend the Stray Goblin first. 
Takes a damage from the spear. No shadow effect. I'm gonna move this unexpected courage because it's gonna be the one that needs to ready and exhaust the most. Uh, I really should have picked a, <laughs> a less mechanically challenging deck for initial tabletop quests. But I'm gonna defend the hill troll. Second Gladden Fields, nice to see that gone. And the Hill Troll takes a damage. Uh, and at this point, I would just use the Hunter to kill the Stray Goblin. And we'll move on. Taking up to 32 threat, thanks to Gladden Fields. Readying all the things. Drawing my cards. Gaining my resources. Hmm, okay. So two of these for an region survivor. And basically the rest of them are discard fodder. So I will send two, four, five, six to the quest. Uh, discard as many as I need. And we reveal, that was two cards, Hills of Wilderland. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's a little nasty. So uh, that is a seven threat location I sent. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, we are up against 10. So I will go exhaust the region survivor to knock it down by one. Uh, and Aristor to knock it down by two so that I can make one progress. Actually, I should use that too. We'll make two progress. I wish I could make one more. I could, I could make one more actually. Uh, yeah, let's use Baragon with Unexpected Courage to reduce it even further. Gets Gladden Fields into the victory display. And I can travel to the Hills of Wilderland, which is obnoxious, but not as bad as when it's in the staging area. I don't have to engage the Goblin Troop. So we just go to combat against the Hill Troll. Defend with Baragon. Does one more point of damage with the spear. No shadow effect means no damage. And I was so prepared to fight back, but that did not happen. <laughs> All right, let's refresh. 33 threat. It's a good thing I haven't needed to heal very much. Resources coming back. I, I could use a Gandalf or something. That is a pretty good one. Yeah, all around I am pretty okay with this. I will play a veteran sword elf who has two friends in the discard pile. Hmm. I believe I will play a Warden of Healing. And I will play a second Envoy of Pillar Gear, adding a resource to Bard. Uh, and we're gonna quest. Uh, this is now a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten progress point location. So two, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, 9, 10, 11, committed to the quest. Up against 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 in the staging area. That is 4 progress. Hmm. All right, pack of wargs could be really bad. But 
I could kill them, that would be great. So let's optionally engage the pack of wargs. Deal out shadow cards for the round. Baragon will defend the wargs, putting a point of damage on them. That is no shadow effect, so they're going to make a second attack. Uh, I will have Baragon defend using this cram, which I almost put in the encounter discard pile. Uh, he's going to take no damage from that second attack. And we will have him defend against the hill troll. Shadow surges into nothing. And Baragon has taken no damage. I have six attack. Uh, which is enough to kill the pack of wargs or put three on the hill troll. I think, because I don't have any more ready, I will kill these wargs. And we're just going to have to deal with the hill troll the slow way. So, taking up 34 threat. Readying all my mess of allies which at least all fit on the screen this time. And adding on our resources. All right. Well, this hand is kind of fun. Uh, I will put a bow of you on the veteran sword elf for free. I will. Put a hauberk of mail on the veteran sword elf for slightly less free. Uh, but now she's got four defense, three attack. It's just pretty good all around. And we are going to commit to the quest. Uh, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, uh, eleven, twelve, thirteen, up against three. Four, five, six. So that is seven progress. Means I spill over and make one on the main quest. Oops. Which means it gets a resource token and the Hills of Wilderland is explored. Uh, I will absolutely travel to Wooded River Bank. And at the beginning of the encounter phase, we spawn a war. Totally fine. I will engage the wargs. I will not engage the goblin troop yet. 34 a threat means I don't have to. So, shadow, shadow. Baragon will defend a hill troll. No shadow effect. Hill troll is now at four of nine <laughs> damage. Uh, and Baragon will defend the wargs. We take one. Shadow effect removes one progress token. So these wargs have basically done nothing. Uh, all right. I will kill the wargs because it only takes three attack. And the veteran sword elf is enough to put one point of damage on the hill troll thanks to her bow of you, which I won't exhaust because you know what's happening. And that is it for this round. So getting up to 35 means we are at the point where I'm going to have to engage the goblin troop. Uh, my hope for this round is basically just not to get screwed by the enemy deck. All right, too many resources now. See what I can play. One, two, three, four. Ooh, that is a good one. Oh, it's all spirit cards and I can't play them all. Uh, but I do have Elrond's Council, which is going to keep me from needing to engage the Goblin Troop just yet. So I think that is a big win. Uh, and... Relative to everything else, I think Unexpected Courage is more valuable to me than Arwen or another survivor. 
as much as it pains me to say that. Uh, so let's quest. I will send two, four, five, six to the quest, and I can make it nine. And we reveal the brown lands. So I'm basically going to need to make it nine. Uh, this is seven and eight and nine with the discard. Uh, my threat goes down to 32. Wooded Riverbank is explored, spawning a Marsh Adder. Uh, I will travel to the Brownlands, which immediately explores that location. And do I want to take the Marsh Adder and possibly kill it? Or do I want to take the Goblin Troop and possibly kill them? Uh, let's take Goblin Troop as an optional engagement. Because then I won't have to raise my threat. Shadow, Shadow. Baragon defends the first attack. Raise your threat by one for each enemy engaged with you. Okay, up to 34 is not too bad. One point of damage on the troop, no damage on Baragon. Uh, I will defend the Hill Troll and ready with the second Unexpected Courage. All right, Hill Troll is up to eight attack compared to my four, five, six, seven defense. I don't have a Raven Winged Helm, which I somehow, I'm pretty sure I've seen it and just not played it. Yeah, see, there you go. All right, so Baragon is gonna take one. The Hill Troll takes one from the spear. And now we get to fight back. Uh, no cards in hand, so that's fun. Uh, Hill Troll needs six. So Baragond is one, two, three, four, five, or two, three, four, five, six. It's enough to make the Hill Troll go away. Uh, and I have, well, Sword Elf and Bow of You is going to put one more damage on the Goblin Troop, at the very least. And I can use the Warden to heal up Baragond. Moving on. Get up to 35. Resources. I feel like I do have everything pretty well under control this time around, uh, but the challenge is going to be sort of making the progress that I need. Uh, I can definitely pull the Marsh Adder out of the staging area this round, I think, and kill it, I hope. Uh, yeah. All right, so one, two, plays an Region Survivor. Yep, and I'm going to quest. I will send two, four, five, six. I think that'll probably be good enough. So my six up against Hills of Wilderland. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right, so my six, here is a seven. Drops my threat down to 32 in the process. Uh, I have to play Good Harvest, naming Spirit, so that I can spend one of these to play a Will of the West. Shuffling my discard pile back into my deck. All right, and I have seven up against 14 in the staging area. So here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, which means that I will exactly tie, thanks to the quest action on Hills of Wilderland, as much as I don't want to do that. Uh, but I make no progress, raise my threat by none. 
and I will travel to the hills of Wilderland. I don't think I'm going to optionally engage the Marsh Adder. Um, I don't have any characters to attack with to clear it out. So I think instead I am just going to defend this goblin troop, raising my threat by one. And doing one damage to the goblin, thanks to Baragon's spear. Move on to the next round. 34 threat. Now I have a second chance to find Arwen and some of the other excellent allies and attachments in the deck, like the Ravenwing Helm that I forgot about. Uh, unfortunately, Veteran Sword Elf is back to one, one elf. But what can you do? It is possible that what I should have done is play Guardian of Rivendell instead. Maybe. Well, or we do something like this, and we will play a second Veteran Sword Elf. Take this up to 12. Uh, and basically none of the rest of these are important, so we're going to commit to the quest. Uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Up against 3 in the staging area. Goblin Surges. All right, so I send eight up against seven. Discard three cards. Means that I sent 11 up against seven, uh, 12, 13. So that is six progress tokens. Halfway there. I uh, can't, I would get both enemies. Uh, I don't think that's worth it. So I'm just going to defend with Baragond. This goblin troop gets a shadow effect, adds a goblin to the staging area. Goblin troop takes another point of damage. Uh, and with three, four, five, and a bow of you for another one, it's me to kill the goblin troop, finally. Clearing that out. And we'll take up to 35. Stand everybody up. Move on to the next round. I guess the question is whether or not I should take a chance on a Dunedain Hunter, but I think the answer to that is no. Most of the enemies from this encounter deck are either on the table or in the discard pile. Uh, so I'm just going to play this Unexpected Courage on Baragond. I wish it was Armin instead. Uh, and we're going to quest. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and my threat is back to 32. So, my 15 up against 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and that'll make 6 more progress. Exactly enough to kill the Hills of Wilderland. And by kill, I mean quest through because I have a lot of allies. I'm forced to travel to the East Bite. And I will optionally engage the Marsh Adder and bring with it these two stupid goblins. Uh, the two goblins get their shadow effects first, and then the Marsh Adder, as I completely run out of room. Uh, Baragond will defend a stray goblin, removing a progress token. Putting a damage on the goblin. Defend goblin number two. Attacking enemy gets plus one. Does absolutely nothing. Uh, and Baragon will defend the Marsh Adder. 
taking a point of damage, raising my threat by one. What do we get? Okay, the Marsh Adder is now a frenzied creature. It is attacking for five, has one extra defense, uh, one extra threat, although that doesn't matter, and it's immune to player card effects. Well, okay, so that means no bow of you, but everything else is fair game. Uh, all right, so we're gonna use Veteran Sword Elf plus bow of you to kill one stray goblin. Might as well use one and one to kill a second stray goblin. I need to shuffle those well. And my Dunedine Hunter will put one whole point of damage on the Marsh Adder. And moving on. 34 threat. Too many attachments. I think I really lucked out that Aristor had more attachments than Baragon when uh, that card came out, because otherwise this would have gone very differently. Get my resources for the round and draw my cards. All right, well, good news. Here's the Veteran Sword Elf. Unfortunately, here also is Arwen, who I was looking for. Uh, but I can put a bow of you on this sword elf. And we will move to questing. I will send two, four, five, six, seven, eight. Up against three in the staging area. Up against four means I'm going to make four progress. So I will discard a veteran sword elf and play Elrond's Council. Dropping my threat to 31 and making just enough progress to clear the East Bite. I will travel to the Wooded Riverbank. Marsh Adder gets a Shadow card. Happens to be weighed down, so there's another one of those. Uh, that sucks. But Marsh Adder takes a point of damage. Baragon does not. My threat goes up to 32. Uh, and now we fight back. Uh, I will discard Arwen to empty my hand. Uh, I have three, four, five, six, seven, because there's now an elf in the discard pile. Uh, which actually is enough to kill the Marsh Adder, so send him back to the Evil Creatures deck. Move on to the next round. Uh, good news is, I think this means, oh wait, I have enough progress. There are no Evil Creatures in play. So we're moving on to stage two. The Woodmen are under attack. Add the Woodman Village to the staging area. And since it's just me, I don't have to reveal another encounter card. All right, refresh. Up to 34 threat. Everything stands up. feel like I might have done that already, but I don't think one threat is going to kill me. We'll move on to the next round. Draw my four cards. Well, as I mentioned before, here is the Raven-Winged Helm for Baragon. I will spend two to play Arwen. I completely run out of space for enemies over here. Might as well just figure out something like that. Just be glad they don't all have damage on them. All right, and we will quest. Uh, two, four, five, six. I should probably stack these differently. Five, six, seven, eight committed to the quest. Yeah, that's probably enough. 
I will reveal pack of wargs. So my eight up against nine, discard two cards to make my willpower 10, which clears the wooded riverbank, adding an evil creature to the staging area. All right. Um, but we're getting to the point now where two thirds of the evil creature deck is, I forgot to flip this to side B, two thirds of the evil creature deck is the stupid goblin sniper. So uh, I'm gonna travel to Woodman Village. We're gonna add another one of these cards to the staging area. Okay, so uh, now both of the evil creatures that are left are goblin snipers. <laughs> We're kind of boned. Uh, but let's just move to engagements. Now optionally engage the pack of wargs. There's a hill troll and a wolf rider following them up. And we get one, two, three shadow cards. Okay. Uh, Baragon will defend the pack of wargs, who are now frenzied. Uh, I'm going to put that there, and I'll put it back on the wargs later. Uh, but they do take the damage before that happens. Defend the hill troll. <sighs> who takes the damage and does six to Baragond. Okay. <laughs> I think there are a lot of quests in this game where the Tower of Baragond is going to serve you very well. And I think this particular encounter set is not one of them. Uh, having a bunch of allies is more or less fine. The, uh, the location that gets super huge when you have a bunch of characters in play gives you a way to sort of mitigate that effect. But despair is really bad. Uh, weighed down is really bad. It's just a lot of ways this quest punishes you for having a bunch of stuff, like having this style of deck. Um, and honestly, it wasn't really going to matter, right? Like this wolf rider wasn't going to do anything serious, but we're going to clear the Woodman Village. Haldan was going to come out. And I was going to have to wait until my threat was 48 before I could move on to the next stage anyways, just because of the shuffle in the stupid evil creatures deck. Well, <laughs> that at least was a close fought loss in a sort of wonky Baragond deck. I'm gonna have to try this again with a little more staging area damage, uh, a little more questing potential out of the gate, maybe a little more low threat to sort of help avoid the hill troll for a little longer. Uh, maybe some more location control, or even just test of will, which you know I kind of don't like using, but it does tend to come in handy sometimes. All right, everyone, that was two attempts at journey up the Anduin, both losses. Hopefully you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.